The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. What up, what up, everybody? Welcome back to the Kaya Podcast. It's me, your girl, Cambria. All right, y'all. So we're going to switch gears a little bit this week. And we've been talking a lot of astrology, which, you know, there's still plenty, plenty more over the next three weeks here in April to talk about. So, you know, we'll definitely circle back to the big astrology placements. We're still in Mercury retrograde, which I don't know about you all, but it is definitely hitting in just little ways and big ways for me personally. So, you know, I really think for the most part, most people that I've talked to that have any large Aries placements, I have an Aries moon. It has been wild, right? A lot of big shifts. So we've made it through the solar eclipse. We're still here. The planet and human uh, humans still are existing <laughs> And so we've made it. So there's a lot this week following the solar eclipse. And I talked about it in the previous podcast, but let me just circle back before we get into today's topic, which is going to be all about goats. No, not like the cute little animals that are just bring so much joy to the world. I'm talking about goats, meaning greatest of all time. So with this week coming off the solar eclipse, I would definitely say continue to take it easy and continue to look at what came up last weekend, what is continuing to show itself. This is a big, eclipses are always an opportunity to jump timelines, switch timelines, let go of things in the past. And I think a lot of us are like, yeah, I've moved on. Just because it's not currently existing in your life does not mean we fully have moved on. So, Take it easy this week with the eclipse. Continue to see what comes up for you. Continue to look at the passion projects, the things that light your soul on fire. What happened around eclipse time? You know, yes, we're kind of released from that energy a little bit over this week, but there's still a lot of information there. So that being said, let's jump in to today's topic. If you don't know, if you haven't listened to other episodes, I am a previous athlete, previous women's basketball player, and coached women's basketball. When I was in high school, I attended the University of Tennessee Lady Volunteers basketball camp, a super elite camp. I met Pat Summit. If you don't know who she is, but you know who Caitlin Clark is, I invite you to definitely jump in and try to learn about Pat Summit. So she was the winningest coach of all time in NCAA history when she was actively coaching. Unfortunately, she had early and onset dementia and Alzheimer's and had to retire super young from her coaching career and then passed away a few short years later, which was as a basketball fan and as a lady volunteer fan and just as an overall athlete, it was super devastating. It was a huge loss to the women's basketball community and a massive, massive loss to Vol Nation. So if you know who Caitlin Clark is, which hopefully most of you do, go learn a little bit about Pat Summit. So she held pretty much every coaching record while she was actively coaching. And then she had to retire early and Gino Ariema from UConn ended up passing her. But she still sits among the top five coaches in women's basketball to ever win more than three national championships. So yeah, so I have this long-standing love of the sport, love of coaching the sport, and I would say the reasons that I love basketball, I played many sports growing up, the reason I love basketball the most was I really felt like it incorporated every single thing. So it was a contact sport, being a Leo and an Aries moon, of course that was great, being able to, you know, be in a contact sport and, you know, it was very competitive. Basketball is a full team sport, right? Every player has to play their position properly and show up and do the best. Otherwise, it can be very challenging to win. It's definitely not a single person sport, right? It takes a team effort. It's mental. There's a lot of mental things to remember, a lot of plays to remember and scouting reports and how to do that. And then it's also just very competitive 
on a different level of like you have to, your brain has to switch and move. You go from defense to offense very quickly. If you miss a shot or you bust up a play, you have to get over it within milliseconds to get back on defense, right? It's an offense defense. So you know how you have to learn how to play both, and it takes a lot and a lot of physical um, exertion. So you know, being in physical, being in great physical shape is super necessary. So those are the reasons I loved basketball. It's fun, it's exciting, and I have been watching the women's NCAA tournament since I was you know sixteen, seventeen years old. That's a long time ago, and I can just tell y'all this past weekend watching the final four and watching the women's championship game and seeing the record viewership, seeing all that that entailed and being able to really just sit there and say, man, look at how far we've come in women's um, basketball. It was emotional for me prior to the championship game. And they're talking about all the records Caitlin Clark has broken. They're talking about all the records of viewership that had been broken and what people were tuning in. And you have now these massive social media platforms and massive, you know, players in the previous NBA and current NBA talking about women's basketball. And it just brought me to tears because it's been a long time coming. I've known that this sport and especially women in general in sports have not had the platform or the publicity or the attention that they deserve. So I am very excited to see what comes from this. That being said, what I want to talk about this week that came up is like this conversation of goats, right? Greatest of all time. So being a former athlete, I think there's a part of me that's like, yeah, that's a cool concept. And maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I'd be like, yeah, that's awesome. And who's the goat and get into these conversations, but I have a little different viewpoint on it now about the goat. So multiple previous women's basketball players that are now in the WNBA, let's talk about Kaylin Clark. So, you know, here's this girl who has broken 45 different records this year. Okay. Um, so then they interview previous women's basketball players from the WNBA and all of them are like without a doubt. So then they interview previous women's basketball players from the WNBA and all of them are like without a natty, right? Or a national championship. She cannot be considered the goat, the greatest of all time. She has to have that. Now, these are all previous UConn players who all signed up and went and played at a school that is known for their national championships, that is known for their winning culture. They have built a dynasty over there. But all of them are like, yeah, she cannot be the GOAT, right? And some people would argue, well, no, she's definitely the GOAT because she broke 45 records and she has done all of this for women's basketball. And then some people are like, that's awesome. And she cannot be the GOAT until she wins a national championship. So, we are post the championship. She did not win a national championship. So then some people are like, well, yes, she's one of the goats. And then I was thinking, isn't it interesting, right? We live in a society, y'all, where we love to name who is the best at what. And that's amazing, right? From a standpoint of competition and wanting to get better and pushing yourself. And there are no goats. Okay. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. You're listening to my podcast in my opinion. Hear me out though. How do you measure impact? How do you measure influence? Okay. To me, that is the goat. And how can you be the greatest of all time? Because does time even exist? And how do you measure the ripple effect of somebody? So just because somebody is well known, or just because somebody won a certain amount of championships, or just because somebody broke 45 records, does that mean they are the greatest of all time? Here's where I think this concept of GOAT is hurtful to society, right? If I want to be an athlete, or if I want to start a podcast, or if I want to put something on, there is this societal conditioning of you are not the greatest at that, so you, therefore you should not be attaining or trying to attain that. You are not the greatest, so just stay in your lane and don't come over here. Here's Caitlin Clark. She went to Iowa. 
I think if I remember three times in their entire collegiate history has the women's basketball team of Iowa ever even made the tournament. (laughs) Okay. So she didn't go to this winning program. She stayed at home. She coached for a coach she wanted to play with. And now she has brought more attention to women's basketball than any other player single-handedly has. Now, I know the greats. I met Shamiqua Holdsclaw. I, like I said, I went to Pat Summit's basketball camp. I watched Stewie win four championships in a row. I watched Diana Tarazi. I watched Brittany Griner. I watched a lot of these players. And I watched the Bama's basketball tournament every single year. And I loved it. But I'm a female basketball player, right? So there was not 18 million people watching women's basketball. Caitlin Clark arrives on the scene. Angel Reese comes in. And their game last year, I think that was a real tipping point. The championship last year where Caitlin and Angel just dogged it out. They just went for it. They were talking trash and everybody had something to say about it because I think most people were like, whoa, women's basketball gets this aggressive? Yes. Women's basketball gets this competitive? Yes. And I think from then on, those, mostly those two, because they were kind of like the focal points of that game, those two really put women's basketball on the map and jumped timelines at that point in time. And so here you have very impactful players this year, right? Cameron Brink, Paige Beckers, all these big names, or Kia Jackson from Tennessee. But ultimately, ultimately, here's this conversation about is Caitlin Clark the greatest of all time? Well, in my opinion, there are no goats because her impact is rippling out through society. She has had such an influence on the game of basketball that I don't think could ever be potentially measured. And what I really loved about watching her as she went through all of this, right? And people said, man, especially her coach, man, the amount of responsibility, her crown that she has been carrying all season is heavy. And that goes for many, many different basketball players, right? But here she is having more more viewership, breaking more records. She pretty much owns every single Division I basketball record in men's or women's at this point in time. So carrying that load, right? And I think there was so much pressure to win that game, so much pressure that like, oh, if she does, now she's the greatest. And if she doesn't, she's not the greatest. I feel like we have to find a better balance as humans, right? How about people just say, hey, Caitlin, do your best, show up, Caitlin's best is better than a lot. Do your best, show up. Her best is better than most. And we will all love you and respect you whether you quote unquote win or whether you quote unquote fail. It's almost like as society, we are so scared to fail. And people are like, I don't know why I'm you know, scared to fail. Well, maybe it's because we are listening to all of this conversation, especially in the sports world. It's like, if you fail, you're not the greatest. <laughs> I know it's so interesting, right? Because, oh, sorry, there's dogs in the background barking about something. So here we do have this, you know, conditioning in our society saying, if you hit A, B, C, now you're the greatest. And that is going to change person to person. To me, I don't believe in greatest of all time. I believe in one of the greatest of all time. I believe in impact. I believe in influence. So it's not about numbers. You can have a million followers on Instagram, but do you actually impact people? Are you influencing people? You could also have a hundred followers on Instagram. You could only have five real friends in your life, but maybe the impact that you have on those five people ripples and that impacts their children and their children go to school with a different mindset and impact other children. So, and it can go on and on. So I really think that this concept around being the greatest of all time is is one that needs to be looked through from a perspective of balance. Yes, let's all strive to be the greatest partner, the greatest parents, the greatest lovers, the greatest friends, the greatest podcasters, the greatest athlete. That striving, that drive to be that is 
very, very powerful. And knowing that we will not achieve perfection as perfection does not exist. And no matter what we do, we will probably piss somebody off, hurt somebody's feelings, disappoint them. We cannot please everyone. Caitlin Clark, one of the greatest basketball players in the history of women's sports, cannot please everyone. She cannot show up on every night, every level, and every single person on the planet thinks she's great. Even when she's breaking all these records, even when she's playing at this high level, doing what she's done, you can read in the comments the haters, oh, well, this, well, it's different. Well, she's shooting at the women's three point and with a women's ball versus a man. It just, it doesn't matter. Oh, she's great, but she didn't win a natty, so she's not the greatest. You hear all of this. And how does that pertain to our lives, right? Who is around us that feels like we are the greatest? Who in your life looks at you like you are the greatest and supports you like you're the greatest? Those are the people we want to be around. Who in our lives is in the comments constantly undercutting because it wasn't enough for them? Who in our lives is undercutting us because they don't agree with what we're doing? Well, y'all, again, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter how great you are or how many titles, how many championships, how many records you break. The reality is there will always be somebody undercutting you, whether it's to your face or behind your back. We cannot please everyone. So in this conversation of greats, let's just maybe think about what people's impact is and what their influence has been on the people around them. Look at your impact. Look at your influence. You impact and influence people. It could be one. It could be a hundred. It could be a thousand. It doesn't matter, right? Because we can strive for greatness within our own society, within our own little community, whether that community be our home, whether that community be our actual neighborhood, whether that community be bigger at large. What I know is the people in Caitlin Clark's life love her regardless. They love her whether she won a natty and they love her even if she didn't win a natty. I don't think her parents, when she came out the womb, were like, okay, if our daughter grows up and wins a national championship, we will then love her. No, they're like, we love this kid. We're going to support her. And what I, one thing I really love too about this whole entire thing is watching, you know, the growth and watching the development even of her as a person and what she's been doing, right? You can see, oh, she just has this competitive drive. Her parents are not in the stands, you know, like, oh, you have to be able to do this or, oh, you have to be able to do that. If anything, he's like, calm down, you got it, right? So we've been blessed, in my opinion, if we've been watching women's sports, to see one of the most powerful, impactful players. What Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and Paige Beckers, Camila Cardoso, Dawn Staley as a coach have done for women's basketball this year cannot ever be taken away. And the lasting impact, the ripple effect, can also not ever fully be known, right? So let's strive to be the GOAT and understand that at the end of the day, there is no such thing as the greatest of all time. It just doesn't exist, y'all. So thanks for tuning into Kaya Podcast. These are some things to talk about. You have the ability to strive for greatness in your own life. Simultaneously know that no matter what you do, we cannot please everyone and it will not impact everybody. So do your best. I know I'm doing my best. And then that's all we can do at the end of the day, right? Show up do what we can and know that our worth is not attached to other people's opinion of us. So that's all for today, y'all. Hopefully this lands. Let me know what you think. Send me a message if this hits. Reach out if this landed for you. I know it's not astrology, but I think it's important. We'll talk soon.